Okay, so I have a ground terminal hanging down from the ceiling and that goes right above my Tesla coil. And I was running some tests um, with a little incandescent light bulb there to see how bright it gets. Um, it's the, the, the filament itself is in series with the, uh, the output discharge. And if you look down even further here, we have some major, major damage. Look at that. That don't look good at all. It's all crusty here. It's big poof of carbonized, nasty black material going up my secondary here. This, uh, this tape is actually covering up a thickly insulated, you know, about 20 kV insulation orange cable. That goes underneath here. And I don't have it hooked up to anything right now, but normally I use that. That's um, on the other side, that's going to the first turn. It's my first turn tap on the secondary coil, and I, so I can measure that voltage. Usually it's only about, you know, a couple hundred volts peak. But, and you know, I was, so I was wondering why the heck did that burst right there? You know, did we get conduction from here to here? Uh, only, only 100 volts and 20 kV of insulation on orange wire. Well, that's because I forgot to hook up the ground connection to the bottom of the secondary coil. This should have been right here, and it wasn't there. So here's the ground terminal going way down here to the ground plate and big thick ground cable all over the place. Son of a bitch. Oh, and of course, I was running my double resonant circuit at the time, and um, as soon as this happened, it stopped working, so I must have blown some of my IGBTs. I peeled back the tape, and the uh, secondary coil is in remarkably good shape. You know, there's no damage to the, to the actual wire here on this coil. It's just the first turn tap wire coming down here that must have arced over to the to the primary coil okay check this out I got all the screws taken off of here off of the IGBTs and I was expecting to you know to need to you know poke around with an ohm meter or something to see if there's any shorts or, or I thought maybe I would have to apply a test circuit apply a voltage to the gate and see if the drain and source become conductive but I opened it up and I saw little black pieces of plastic here and sure enough I don't need to test anything. Look at that. Both of these things, they just exploded. These are the, uh, both of these are one, one half of the H bridge on the, uh, you know, one side of it. Real nasty cracks going all over the case. The other two are in pretty good shape, so they they might still work. Good thing though, I when I bought these, I bought four extras because I was expecting this to happen eventually. So after I get the bad ones replaced, I can keep on working. All right, I popped the the plastic off of, you know, popped all the nuts and everything off of these things, and there they are. It's just each one of them is blown up on the one side actually you know the uh, the actual silicon die is apparently not mounted in the center but it's offset a little bit this is the gate and the drain and then two sources on the other side here and there it is just a little well cavity crater tiny little bits of molten metal in there and also, you can see that there's four little indentations in there, and those correspond to the other side of the plastic here. There's four holes, four little, or I think those are the bond wires where, the, where it was actually connected, or I'm not sure if that's actually a gate drain and two sources, or if you know all those are parallel together and they go to one of these terminals uh, but basically it's just total meltdown 
it's interesting to see the internal structure of these big power semiconductors, but I really didn't want to do it this way. And actually, I think all those wires are, they do are all parallel together because here there's four little holes. There's a pair of two and there's another two right next to each other. And so they, let's see if I can figure out where this went. Looks like it went to this one here. Yeah, they went down to the source. One of the one of the source terminals went down to this one right here. So I guess the gate and the drain went elsewhere. They connected some somewhere else. Also, each one of these has a uh, protection diode inside the package. I don't know if it's actually part of the same silicon package as the IGBT or if it's a completely separate die that's bonded to the copper base. Now for the other two, got a little test circuit here, a 12 volt battery, a light bulb, and let's hook up the drain, I mean the, the gate, and look at that. Light bulb turns on, and since the gate is floating, it should slowly drain and the light bulb should slowly turn off one of these days or maybe I can just short it to ground there we go let's flip over to the other one here and that one still works too awesome and equally important to test is the reverse bias um, diode that's in the package and the protection diode and that one looks pretty good. Let me hook up this one too. Same voltage. And put these on one of the newer ones. Same volt. Oh, you know what? I should test one of the, the busted ones, see if the diode survived in these guys. Huh, look at that. The diode's still good. This one too. Awesome. I guess that means that the diode that's uh, in the package is on a separate die. It's you know right next to it, right there. So we got one die for the IGBT and oh look at that. I'm poking right there. We get 0.36 volt. I don't know. I'm no expert in power semiconductor construction topologies. So there's the new IGBTs on the heatsink. I'm going to put these down and just like that, it's all back together. All right, let's see if that fixed it. Apparently not. Something's still broken. I was going to poke around with an oscilloscope on the uh, driving electronic circuits here, um, but I figured I would just pop chips in and out, so I put replace the, the MOSFET logic gate driver. The you know, the, uh, the MOSFET gate driver circuits. These these chips drive the the gates of the IGBTs, and those are the old ones. Those are the new ones. Turned everything on over there and still got no action over here. So then I popped out the uh, logic circuits one by one and the 74HC14 put it in this handy dandy chip tester here and it should say a 14 if it's working but it shows me 04. So 
Guess I'll put a new chip in there and see if that'll fix it. All right, I think I found it. I uh, did turn on the scope and poke around a little bit and I tracked it down to the, uh, the transient voltage suppressor and a uh, little 1N5819 um, shot key diode right there and then another pair right there and all four of those components are short circuit. I'm measuring across two of them in series here and we got 0.13 ohms and uh, it's you know it's really bad. There's also these uh, Zener diodes in here too. I measured those separately they're fine but this is that's basically what we're looking at right here this transient voltage suppressor and this shot key diode up here short circuit from here all the way to here is what I'm measuring and so I'm just gonna have to cut those out and replace them and then hopefully everything will be working and this is why you always order more parts than you need you can see here's got a whole bunch of transient voltage suppressors here some of them I use some of them I didn't um, for different parts of the the whole Tesla coil system but uh, there's the 1.5 K E 33 C a bi-directional TVS 1500 watts so apparently it when these things when the other ones blew they were dissipating in excess of 1500 watts so I'll pop two of these in there and uh, as a matter of fact I'm gonna be real lazy here I already cut them out I'm just gonna solder directly onto the leads of the old components I'm not gonna bother taking this off and doing it properly on the bottom of the board by the way before I was referring to the uh, on these things on the old IGBTs I was talking about gate drain and source well that's incorrect because it's a insulated gate bipolar transistor and what do bipolar transistors have they have collector and emitter so there's the gate collector and emitter here we go that's what they look like there's their pin out gate collector and emitter on the IGBTs and that's the part number that I'm using too and there they are good as new put the isolation transformers back in here let's give it another shot I'll just run it at low power oh I hear something that sounds pretty good Yep, yep, yep. The yellow one is the primary current. That's exactly what it should be looking like. Awesome. So I guess I finally fixed it. All right. Got to clean up that mess over there and put the Faraday cage back on and see if it runs full blast.
Well, there we go. Works beautifully. Got it fixed. And uh, after looking at my notebook here, I saw the date, January 2011. That's two and a half years ago that I started messing with these IGBTs. I'm surprised it took me two and a half years to finally cause them to fail. I've been, I've been very careful with these things after all this time. But um, there's one last look at the damage, and it looks like it wasn't just a single instantaneous spark. I think there was actually some kind of flame that was going on here. It, you know, some, there must have been some continuous sparking here for a period of time, and it caused the flame to build up, and that's what all this smoky stuff was going up alongside the, uh, the secondary coil. But got that cleaned off the coil itself is not harmed in any way and all this just put some extra tape on that it'll be fine and um, of course I didn't see with this primary coil in the way that's why I didn't see the flame in the first place because standing back here you can see it's behind this is here this is about my eye level but usually I'm looking down here or looking at the top I'm not looking down there, and even if I was, I really can't see through all those coils. So that's a look at my Tesla coil stuff. I'll be making a lot more videos about this soon. Thanks for watching.